welcome to Bullside Chat with CJ. Today, we have a special guest, Connor, and he's going to be telling us a little bit about his time in the military and what brings him to BBN and what his goals are for growing. So, uh, Connor, why don't you tell us, um, you know, just a little bit about you, um, what branch of service you were in and how you found Balance Veterans Network. So, I am... Uh... So I was in the Marine Corps. Uh, I did four years. Well, I did like three and a half years in the Marine Corps. I got medically separated. I was a combat engineer. Um, I so basically I was like the guy, the minesweeper. But we did more like when I, I was stationed. I lived in Japan for two years. Jumped around the Philippines, Korea. Like I uh, then I got injured out in Oki. Like went through a bunch of surgeries and got injured more in the Philippines and just like seen a bunch of stuff overseas. So now I'm, I got a bunch of stuff going on right now, but so long story short, did, uh, did my time in the court, got medically separated. Uh, and so now I've, since I've been out, I think I've gotten probably like three or four surgeries. I got about three surgeries when I was in the Marine Corps, all started from like my knee. I, Blew out of ACL, and then it's just kind of like traveled up. Now I got issues going on with my back. I just had a disc replaced, but then there's like another, there's a disc. So I got my L1, S5 replaced. Now they got a disc above it that's like degenerating, that's like dying basically. So they're going to go back in and do all that. And so basically like, so I got out in 2018, um, did the whole, like took a year off, went all, you know, did the thing, you know, I was I lived the life of what I missed out on and whatnot, went the wrong path, chose the wrong things, you know, was drinking and drugging and sit like, you know, self-medicated in the wrong way, like trying to get through everything. Uh, and I was just ignoring, like, I was ignoring everything. I was ignoring my boys, my friends, so, you know, I was just partying it up. To, you know, I got a severance pay, just they let me out to the wolves. And, you know, I just, I, I ran with the pack and just got ate up, dude, at the end of it. Uh, but so in 2019, tried to put a bullet in my head. Uh, I was just drinking, dude, fighting demons and shit. Um, and then, yeah, so the drinking got a little too out of hand. Everything was kind of coming at me. I was going through a lot in life. Uh, and then, so ended up passing out. Obviously not. Obviously there's no hole, hole in my head. So didn't get to go through with it uh thankfully so i'm here now but uh so ever since just kind of like been struggling a little bit being out um and kind of just like being involved in the world with not only the surgeries but like finding a place and finding a job and whatnot and so through all the struggles and like therapy and everything bro i just kind of ended up one day there was this place nearby uh operation lima charlie because there's this dude i because i worked for I was power coping for a little bit. Well, I still power code technically, but surgeries right now, I'm just down. But uh, so we were power coping for a guy called that did uh, OCB, Operation Combat, Combat Bike Saver. J Combat Bike Saver. So Jason Ziedman, he was like with Mike Rowe and all that. He uh, got recognized by like, you know, so what he did with these dudes with PTSD, they got brought in, they could like build a bike and blah, 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 whatever, before I go down this completely other path, right? So like I started getting linked in like with the around like veterans a little bit. And so finally like bit the bullet dude and was like, all right, I'll go to a group, you know, like I'll go see if this will help out. You know, I did, I was trying to do therapy to the, to, uh, the VA, they are giving me all these pills and shit, dude. And just like, you know, I was having mood, just all the mood changes, side effects, pills and everything. So. I was kind of like losing my mind one day, dude. And I then honestly just walked into like this group and met this guy, Eric. And uh, he runs Project Headspace and Timing out by me. And so me and him got to talking. And then he told me about this BVN. And he was like, because I told him that because I was having an issue with substances, you know, like I was taking a lot of pills, obviously, like, you know, Percocets and Oxys and everything, like with all the surgeries. So, and then alcohol too, like I was, I was just self-medicating with all the other stuff. But, uh, so then I obviously, I stopped drinking. I stopped, I, I've really been like, you know, trying to not take any pills and whatnot. Um, and so I've been telling him about this and trying to like, I've become like more like this mental health person with them, like going to college and whatnot. Like, and so 
during like the process of getting better and like trying to find my find ways of to of dealing with pain, um, I found out about Jen Baxter, and then found out about BVN, um, and then so basically it came down to it. I was like, dude, like I'm spending a lot of money a month, you know, like. In Illinois, they they will tax you some outrageous, outrageous rates, bro. Like, it's, you're better off just like anytime you're having a thought of smoking, you might as well just go buy like a little like thirteen dollar pre roll because either way you're walking out of there spending like twenty five bucks because of taxes and shit. You know, like it's insane. And so to get any help, like I was smoking like an ounce, you know, a week, like, and it was obviously like I was doing more for a while there, but then like. I was, it was just costing too much money and I, I stopped, I stopped smoking. And so I found myself like getting further and further away from smoking. And I was like, damn, like, I'm really feeling like a lot more. I'm hurting more. Like I want to start taking all these pills again and whatnot. And Eric was like, yo, I got this, these people with that might, you know, they might hook you up with some gross stuff, you know, like they, I don't know what all they do. Like, we'll just check it out. Like he was like, but I would like to get something like that running down so that, uh, down in the King Key Bourbon A area, there's like, we, we got, a, we're a pretty big like outpatient because there's an outpatient clinic around us for the, for Heinz and shit down here. So there's a good probably like 60,000 people down here. And statistically speaking, he was like, yo, there's probably going to be within the next like five to 10 years, like 30,000 vets kind of use 30 to 60,000 vets moving south, right? And so coming from the suburbs, like a little bit further south. And he was like, the little bit that I heard about Operation 1620, like, we need to get going, something like that going down here around us, you know, to where there's guy, you know, because, because, dude, the VA down here, like, I got thousands, and like, like, they send me pills of gabapentin all the time, like, dude, they just, sometimes I get bought, like, scripts that show up at my door, I'm just like, what the fuck is this, like, I didn't even ask for a refill, bro, you know, like, and then you can look up and all these pills got side effects, you know, and then you go see another doctor after you waited 14 months to try to get into this appointment that all of a sudden got canceled because the front lady's not working and, anymore and she messed up, like, you know, so you're dealing with all this shit and then we were, our idea was like, yo, let's try to get this down here so that these guys, like, you know, you're not going to the pharmacy because it, it really is, dude, like smoking weed has been like a, I don't want to say, like my dad likes to say a crutch sometimes, right, but it's, and this is one of the questions I got for you coming up here shortly in a little bit, but like, there's real, there's real heavy stigma around it. Right. Like this idea of like, all right, you just get stoned and like, you're not around and you're just not, you know, you gotta be this completely other person. It's like, well, cause, cause I, I run into some issues in my family like that, you know, and uh, it's, it's fighting that stigma because I really do. Marijuana has really helped me out in more ways than one, just like, getting stoned and like really growth in my mind you know like I'm 27 and definitely most 27 year olds my age are not thinking about some of the shit and just like you know done the therapy and all that you know psychiatrists and shit like gone in depth into like trying to work and be better and all that like I got five kids you know like most 27 year olds aren't having five kids and shit you know so I gotta grow up a lot faster do a lot of different things and like it's tough because with all that comes new responsibilities and all these stresses and shit. And I'm like, bro, I got enough on my, my mentality, like hitting the bowl, bro. Like that shit just helps out, man. You know, like getting a little stony baloney before everything just makes life a little bit easier, dude. You know, and then on top of it, the days that you are going down or all of a sudden, you know, my knees firing up and my back's firing up, dude, you know, you just go hit the blunt, they go hit the bowl, dude, instead of like popping this pill, you know, and I feel more coherent throughout the day. So, like, Operation 1620 has just been, like, as soon as I found out about you guys, dude, I was like, yo, this, like, we got to figure out what this is about, you know, because I'd love to not only, like, be a part of this, dude, because the little the little amount of time that I've even been involved in the community, like, I've had, like, six different dudes reaching out to me, you know. Like, I literally am talking to three guys already. Like, there's one dude from Juliet. There's another guy, Bryce, that I guess he was disc golfing with the other day that I've been talking to. Like, everybody's just been so welcoming and so like, yo, I got this for you. I'll help you out here. Like, I can do this for you. I can do that. Like, it's just just the community alone. Like, not to say that, you know, stoners, like, I mean, stoners are nice people in general. But, you know, like, you get a bunch of high vets, dude. Like, this, this, is, this is morale, bro. Like, this is a brotherhood, dude. Like, this, it, it, this is what's up, man. So... 
But yeah, I guess long story long, 1620 just came about me. I walked into a, I just walked into the wrong right place at the right time, met this guy who knew all the connections, you know, and he knew Jim Baxter. And then Jim Baxter led me to 1620. And then I found out, you know, ACJ is the leading guy on this whole, you know, thing from Chicago. It kind of all stemmed from Chicago. And so I'm not from Chicago. I'm from the South. You know, I'm our South down by like Bradley, Bourbon area. But, you know, Chicago's home. It's, you know, I've always flown in over here. So I like to, I would like to represent some, some operations 1620. You know, like this is a big deal. Illinois, like, we're just, I know we're just passing laws and whatnot, dude. Like, I'd really, I'd really like to help out here, bro, you know, because it's, it's really changed my life, dude, for the better. Like, you know, I, I drink, drink it from the bottle, picking up the bottle was real easy, but, you know, meeting them demons the day, you know, the days when I was sober instead of like, there's just, there's so many different ways you can go about these things, dude, instead of taking a pill, drinking a bottle, you know, and I think this way has been one of the easiest and uh, allowed me to, grow emotionally and properly you know while while uh attacking my goals of life still because life don't stop dude like the clock the clock the clock keeps ticking and that was the biggest thing about putting the gun up dude was you know i couldn't i couldn't get a grasp on anything dude everything was moving too fast i didn't like it i didn't fit in anymore you know i didn't like that was the thing you know so but yeah, enough of my word vomit. That's kind of my story, bro. That's how I kind of came about around this point. All right. Well, you know, I want you first off to know you're not alone. I'm a little bit older than you. I'm going to be 43 this year. And I was discharged um, after three years of service, um, service connected, injured well in, um, given a litany of pills when I was done. Cannabis wasn't even legal then. I was kind of always a stoner. So I was just getting high, drinking a lot. I got the severance package, bunch of money. I'm like, I'm out fucking keg party with fucking, uh, fucking teeners, you know, fucking doing yeah, blow. Yeah. top of the pills. Um, so, you know, the stories are the same and these are the same stories we've heard from veterans, you know, from all eras, um, whether you went to war or not. Um, it's, it's crazy. And the normalization of alcohol in the veteran community is super wild and you can't just drink your problems away that's been a huge issue of the past and a lot of veterans organizations as good as they were that was kind of was their focus was they were you know old boys drinking clubs and that's something that we're not so i'm really glad you found us um i'm going to start by touching on the stigma of cannabis i've been using cannabis since i was far too young to be using cannabis and that is not acceptable I want our children using cannabis but that said i've been I spent half of my life as what I consider an outlaw because I was always pro plant. Um, in my time in service, I had a big fucking poster of the High Times Cannabis Cup champions from the year 2000 in my um, room in the barracks. And my first sergeant wanted me to take it down and I fought and I went to the company commander and I said, hey, can I have a picture of a daisy or a rose? He said, yeah. I said, well, that's a flower and there's nothing wrong with it. At that time, it was medicinally legal in California only. I'm like, look, it's, it's medicinally legal in one of our states. Um, drug test me all you want while I'm in my service. I'm not going to be consuming this, this drug because it's illegal and it's not part of what I signed up for. But after I got out, I realized that the hippies were right. These, a lot of the old hippies and growers um, were veterans. They found that this medicine helped them. Um, so for the stigma, um, one of the things that really changed the way I view it was when I'm a, I was a single dad for 12 years. Um, and at about three years old, my kid asked me, to go take my medicine because I'm a better dad. <laughs> Y'all can say what you want about stigma, but when you have the power of a child tell you something that like that edge needs to be taken off, there's nothing wrong with having a crutch. I like to say cannabis is one of the tools in the toolbox. We still might not be able to get off all the pharmaceutical drugs that we, we are on, but we can alleviate many of them. And that leads to a healthier, more balanced life. So Ooh. Stigma ends by people like us standing up and saying we're veterans, we're type A personalities. We were ones that, you know, understood the risk of what we did when we signed up on the dotted line and we're ready to go fucking gun ho. I mean, jump out of airplanes, fucking helicopters, landing crafts, let's go kick ass. Um, and we still got that as veterans, even though we're fucking hurting, limping on a fucking crutch with broke backs and broken knees. We still have I'll that. Still go, bro. 
<laughs> and, and the stigma is just go out and talk to people and tell them, hey, look, man, I'm a that's why I like balanced veterans of, of all the groups that are cannabis friendly veteran groups. We're not just like a bunch of stoners like I'm still a stoner, but dude, I go I'm active. I do things. I have a full time job. I raise a family. I cannabis helps me be better at that because I don't have to take the prescription drugs that leave me dumbed out and yes exactly. back to suicidal ideology and stuff like that and it's really just not the best path i'm never going to tell anybody to cut all their pills out at one time but let's definitely look at what other alternative medications can help you um you know something like cannabis can help you slow your thought train down like you said your mind's racing and it all seems overwhelming because it's coming at you so fast the kids the job the stress is how am i going to pay for it all what I'm hurt now. Now I can't go to work every day. And you add a trigger, like some something loud happens, and then boom, you're gone. If this, if this right here can make me slow down and realize that everything's going to be all right, and I can tackle these problems one at a time, and I do have that ability because, man, I'm a veteran. I'm one of 7% <laughs> of the total population who was able to do and do what we did um, can accomplish anything. And when we have our community of brothers and sisters around us, it's absolutely 100% easier because I got your six. Um, so let's start with your grow questions and uh, take off from there. All right, dude. Yeah, man, for sure, dude. That's like, uh, yeah, everybody always, you know, everybody says like, oh, dude, you know, you're, you're, when you get high, like you'll, you'll work worse. You know, it's like, dude, no, you know, half everybody at work too would be like, hey, when Connor's high, you know, like his, his his work gets better, dude. You know, like it's complete opposite. But so it's it's pretty much like growing dude completely is just brand new to me. Like, well, you know, I haven't like I've grown like a flower, dude, you know, like watered it in the window as a kid and shit. But so like nutrients and everything and like taking care of a plant, you know, like you know, I'm also a first time home buyer, like so I, I would also, you know, I would like to get pretty much like a good science of how everything kind of like works down to you know just you know i don't want to just be like here i just fucking water this plant because a lot of these videos that i watch dude this guy's like you know oh well it's phosphate deficient and this thing needs some fucking calcium you know and then all of a sudden the yield that this dude gets off this plant you know is like half the size of his fucking face you know like this that like that's that's where i'm trying to get at you know but it also is good fucking knowledge all around but uh so it's basically like nutrients, you know, and like the dirt and all that. Cause there's also, there's, there's organic and whatnot. And then there's, there's synthetic and all that. So getting into that, but really, I guess like in the beginning, like, why did you, like, what made you want to just start growing? Like you just needed some weed and, you know, and needed to get, you had access to it or, you know, how'd you get your knowledge? Like where did it all, how, how did it bloom for you? My story, <laughs> my first plant was, uh, what, like 96 <laughs> that's the year I'm that's growing the year in the born, dude. Corn fields um never was successful with any of these outdoor plants like i had them get you know this big and they get eaten by deer um different things would happen um never really had anything found wild weed several times growing up harvested it smoked it got headaches um it's hemp. Oh, it's, all, it's all over where i live in the, in the far northwest suburbs of chicago they grew hemp for fucking victory during World War II. It was huge. Um, I've always been wanting to grow cannabis, like my whole life. Like since I smoked it the first time, I was like, dude, I want to grow this plant. So I started reading High Times. High Times led me to thing like Ed Rosenthal's, uh, the Cannabis Growers Bible or something like that, Jorge Cervantes. Um, there was a couple of books that got passed around. Um, one of my lifelong friends, and I call him, he's my gromi. Um, his little brother went to the army, he could, <laughs> oh, growing, yeah. but he's a huge supporter of our community. And he too had that same itch and desire. And we just studied, um, fast forward. I went to the military, got out, um, started growing weed to make some money. Um, and we did it outdoors. We gorilla grew, grew several times. Um, sometimes successfully sometimes not it was better weed than what was brick weed available oh, yeah. uh, then i did some like pretty shady grow operations in like the 2010 area like up to a 100 slot aeroponic table um 
and I got busted. I was the seed guy. I got busted with uh, about 45 seeds, all in breeders packs from Europe with the Damn. sales receipts. with notes on all the strains and pictures of the grow and uh, McKinney County Sheriff's task force called me and they're like, Hey, do you want to work for us? I'm like, what do you want done? I'm a fucking handyman. I'm like, nope. <laughs> it's saying shit. And I wound up with um, a misdemeanor for possession of seeds because I fought it hey. myself. I'm a veteran. I'm a single parent. I'm a homeowner, a small business owner. Um, it's some seeds. Um, I knew the laws would change and, and and they did eventually. But the stigma was hard. Like I said, it was 20 years of being an outlaw, 20 years of growing illegally, hustling, um, getting knowledge where I could. The knowledge is so free now. It's everywhere. Um, and I'm OK to talk about it. So I am no expert. I am a student of this game and I will always be a student of the game. Um, the technology changes fast. It has changed fast in the last five years from where I learned to grow to what I grow now is completely different. Um, I've grown synthetically, I've grown organically, I've grown hydro. Um, every system has its place. It's about finding what you want. Now you've seen all these videos and you've heard people talk about different things and benefits of this and that and nutrients. Anything that is an established nutrient line, if you follow the directions, will provide you with quality cannabis. Um, <clears throat> cheap isn't always best, but like General Hydroponics three part that's been around forever makes some decent cannabis. I recommend new growers to find a product like Grow Dots, where you just add water and use recharge with it. I was a tester for it. It's super easy. Um, organics it's the same way, but you kind of got to balance soil more a little bit and, um, you can become deficient a little bit easier. Um, so really it's, it's, it's choose your path. Um, the beauty in growing is that it's adaptable for everyone. There's styles available for everyone. The baseline knowledge for all methodologies of growing is going to be the same. We need to control the environment. So you said you own a home. Are you able to put a tent into a room that can be dedicated for a grow space that you can put a dehumidifier in and climate control a little differently and keep the lights off? That's a game changer. We call that a lung room because then if you control the ambient temperatures in the lung room, the air that's being drawn into your tent will already be climate controlled. You'll evacuate it out into that room. It'll get you know dehumidified and regulated to what it needs to be. So environmental control is one of the biggest things. That said, you can grow with a total budget setup and it's been done. We've had several members do it and you can expand your grow and your setup as you go along. You can literally start with a compact fluorescent light bulb and a little closet and you yeah. can have successful grow. Is your yield going to be the best? Are you going to put the size of your head? No. And and don't always expect buds the size of your head because certain strains of cannabis don't even make buds that big if you grew them with the utmost efficiency. Like, I don't think I've ever grown a bud the size of my head except outside. So um, yields are way over talked about. Like, I've got these two pound plants. To grow a two pound plant inside, you're going to have to veg it for like seven months. It's far easier yeah. to take high plant count. Fill up a three by three area with those plants with a little bit of low stress training and, you know, four to six weeks if it's clones, a little bit longer if it's from seed and fill out that canopy with five plants and get your harvest down. With the modern technology and LED lighting, it's far easier to keep small grow spaces environmentally controlled, especially if we have a lung room. So... So now with now how you were saying, like with the environment and then now like with the stretch training and so on, like where, so that's probably one of the, like, I'm, I'm getting down pretty good. Like the, like the, the dirt and all that, the, this, like, I still kind of like, I'm not understanding the process so far of like, obviously, so like it goes like germinate, you know, and, and it all depends obviously on like, the, like there's auto flower and then the photo. I was learning a little bit about that. Like, so auto flower, like some people do still germinate them and then just stick it. like once they get it to get it, get it to pop out, like they'll put their finger in there and then just plant it like directly in the big pot. Because like if their tap root goes down, it can just stun it, you know, but some people also just put the seed directly in there and just let it, you know, roll out right then and there. Um, 
and then like with the photo uh it's i i seen that there's there's a lot of like obviously like you're saying the veg and like letting it grow out you know the bigger the long that's that's that was one of the questions is that like you know the longer that you let it veg and then send it into flower so is it really just it's as easy to send it into flowering on its own it's as easy as literally just changing the light schedule yes so cannabis is a photosensitive plant and in nature, when the light cycle changes, um, around our point in time outside, oh, about August 15th, um, plants are going to start flowering. That even though it's not 12 hours outside yet, the just changes happen. They found that under 12 hours of light, it's an optimal place for a cannabis plant to begin flowering rapidly. It causes hormonal changes in the plant to begin flowering. The auto flowers, um, like you, like you're aware kind of are on a timer about 30 to 45 days in, regardless of what the light cycle is, they are going to begin to flower. So if you do anything wrong and stunt them in that time, or even if they just, for whatever reason, you know, the shell gets stuck on as it's germinating, it can set it back a day. A day is a lot of time when you only have 30 days of, of, of vegetative growth. Um, that said, autoflowers are really great. They have a great place. I don't feel they're the best for a new grower because if you err in the beginning, you don't have the ability to recover by just extending veg a little bit longer. Um, with growing huge plants, another issue is the older a plant gets, the longer it's been in a pot, the more prone it is to having a deficiency, getting root locked. Um, it's harder to take care of when the roots fill the pot. I like to, I, I, we, we growing indoors don't have a lot of vertical space. We don't need to get our plants to grow super tall, just kind of bush them out. And realize yeah. that the, it's about the size of the pot. Anything bigger than the size of the pot, you're really going to stress it um, for watering. And unless you have a timing watering system and you're really experienced, it's probably not best. So you can grow smaller plants and still get comparable yields. It's about filling the canopy space. Um, is that where the stress training comes in? And, and so, like, is that because I've seen a lot of, like, because I've seen it with the pots or some people just use the fabric pots, which is confusing because like these fabric pots seem a lot smaller than like the other pots. So if it's going to, if the auto flower is going to stun its growth, like I feel like these, these small little fabric pots would stun its growth right then and there, but he still seemed to have a pretty decent like grow in the video. But so what he was doing is halfway through, like it would start, like there would be one little branch going this way and then he would have one thick branch and he would hook it around under like the uh the handle of the pot you know so is that so like is that are you trying to control the canopy and how do you how do you do that how do you how do you control like its growth outwards and fill it okay so there's several ways we can start with the low stress training method which is best especially if you're with an auto flower and with auto flowers be careful trying to train them if you train them and you're too hard on them in that short veg cycle and you stunt them you're fucking them up this is again why a, a photo period plant's a little bit better. Um, so the plant has its main stem and to low stress train it, you're just gonna pull this stem over. And what happens when you pull the stem below another branch, the energy will change. The plant will sense that, that that's been pushed down and it's no longer, it's called the atypical meristem to begin with. That's the main stem. When that is bent over, the energy will get pushed out to the side shoots and they will try to catch up. You can also do a higher stress form of training. At that point, you can top it, which is going right where the top node is and cutting it off and it will become two branches. So anytime you top a plant, um, that one will become two and you can do two and then top those and then you'll have four. So that's a little bit harder on the plant um, and takes a little longer to recover, but that is the older method. Low stress training is, I think, I think one topping with a photo plant, like when it gets four nodes, four branches, I'll top it. So then it'll have two at the top. And when you top it, that energy again will, will direct to the lower branches and they'll usually bush out a little bit. And then you have your training net um, set and you just keep, as it's trying to grow up, just bend the branches down until that canopy's filled up and they're all kind of tucked in there. And then when you hit it to flower, they're all, you allow them to stretch up through that net and that so will keep supported um, as they build weight. So it's basically like, you'll, it's so like, 
obviously if you're trying to grow a tree standing straight up, you would just hit it directly straight up. But so by bending it, it's wanting to give it more structure because I can understand like a structural integrity standpoint. So like it's wanting to create a better structure and structural integrity. So you basically keep fighting like it's gravity until it goes up into four different branches and then you top it, it'll create its final two. And then you, you just kind of just like, you're basically just, it's, it's kind of like fluffing a, a Christmas tree, except you're just wanting to do it all the way down to each little branch then. Pretty much. Yes. Oh, all right. All right. It, 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 like, it seems complicated, but I guess like, cause I see a lot of it to where like sometimes during the videos, like guys will go in and they'll just like cut little branches off, you know, which now like understanding kind of a little bit about like what because during watching the trees grow a lot of the, one of the guys came over and he was like yeah these are called something uh branches and all they do is like they out of the main growth they kind of just take feed directly from the main growth you know and then they do what they do like and they just kind of grow off from there uh and so like i i would guess like that's what nipping it along like the main stem would do is like continue the main feed down the stem until you want it to kind of finally vet like canopy and veg out right even then once you do your training you'll be trimming the lower branches the light in an indoor environment is only able to penetrate so deep through the canopy so that's why i say we're not trying to grow tall plants just spread them out low because you only get you know 18 inches to 20 to 24 inches of light penetration through a canopy so where your first net is, where you've tucked anything, everything in, when you start flowering, everything below that you'll strip off. We call it shaving the legs, um, yeah. you know, and you'll take out the sucker branches, all those little branches you'll chop off. They will give you bud, but it'll all wind up just being this little, it it's won't be worth your time to trim it. You'll still have some stuff on the bottoms that will wind up like that. That makes really good, you know, can of butter and other things like that. But the idea is you want all the energy going to the tops. And if you think about, you go out into the forest, like where there's a big tree underneath, it goes up, you know, and then it spreads out. All those branches underneath, when you're looking up, don't have leaves. All the leaves are really only at the top of the tree up in the canopy. The cannabis buds are the same way. You want to just fill the top and everything below that top gets eliminated. So. All right. That's easy then. That makes it seem a lot. See, so so then now down to dummy just dummy and nutrients down right so like what's the what's barney style what would you say was like the top like your highest priority starting out right because there's a lot of different ways to where you can just easily just get redirected right like you sit there and you're just like all right well this guy's adding this additive and this additive and this additive and my ph is at 65 and this is that and that you know all of a sudden you're getting lost and now you're just like it's not just you know, because now it's strain specific and but he runs, you know, 75 pH at this strain. So now before you just get lost in all the vocabulary and the different ways that you could do, how would you prioritize kind of like your top like five to 10 fundamentals of just like figuring out like, hey, get this this thing from seed to bud, you know, from through like your harvest, through your, through your trim, all of that. So as far as nutrients go, again, I'm going to say pick one line and use their line as recommended. Um, some people do this half dose stuff. No, 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 no. Follow the recipe. Yes, they may. If it's burning your plant, cut it back. But typically they are designing these lines to hold on one second. I'm having an issue. All right, sorry about that. So nutrient lines, if you stick with their nutrient line and follow what has um, been recommended, they've had a scientist you know, formulate this stuff. Sometimes they might have you run a little heavy because, well, they're selling products and they wanna sell more of them. Yeah. With that said, we're not scientists why play with it? I'm not one to try to mix things and do this and that. Um, hello, Max. I've always followed the instructions. Um, right. and, and you do 
buy a quality nutrient line, stick with it, and you should have good success, whether it be floor effects, nectar for the gods. Like I said, general hydroponics three-part, or, or say what you want about it, it's been around forever for a reason, and it's formulated for cannabis. I, I forget the name of the bottles, but there's one bottle out there, and this one company, and all their bottles got really flashy logos on them. Um, really cool. They draw you in. There's like a chick in front of like a B-52 bomber on one of their bottles, and I'm not trying to trash them, but there is no need to have that many bottles, and they're yeah. selling it separately when you don't necessarily need it. If that's what you want to do, that's a really expensive way to grow, and it can be done just as quality for far less money. Um, I know Nectar of the Gods has like a, I think it's a six bottle lineup and they give out, they give the bottles out for free. You can go to their website and they'll send you a sample pack. And if you do enjoy mixing and measuring, those are like liquid organic nutrients and they're really, really fucking quality. A lot of our members use them. Um, Nectar for the Gods is a big supporter of our organization. So I will, I will throw them a bone there as far as nutrient companies. I'm getting ready to run emerald harvest um they were really nice i met them hold on All right, so I was saying uh, I'm going to use the Emerald Harvest nutrients. I've never run them before, but I have faith in, well, like I said, most of these nutrient companies that are putting out a line, I'm going to use their full line. I'm going to follow their instructions, and I should have no issues by following um, their instructions. So is it so is it like you put everything in the pot day one, and then you just water from there? Or is it like, because like, you were saying grow dots, like you drop it in. <laughs> throughout like throughout different phases there's like because I, I went to grow five is one of the places nearby and he like with one of the auto flowers he was like all you gotta do is stick your finger in there and then just water for the next you know two months three months and he was like and with you know within a while like you're good so is it now is is it depending on the brand like it's a stage thing like to where they're like all right stage one stage two stage three or is it like hey everything's in this cocoa mix right here all you do is just water from day one to day 40 you know like well, how's it all that's gonna again depend on what you choose so if you choose like a bottle line you'll be having to mix uh nutrients uh one to two times a week typically um for like mixing any bottled nutrients um if you do like a dry amendment organic top dress you might have to add amendments onto the top, you know, a couple of tablespoons um, every three to four weeks. If you're using a product like Grow Dots, that is as simple as when you mix your pot, you measure the volume of Grow Dots for your volume of soil, follow their instructions of four weeks of veg time or six weeks of veg time, whatever one you get, and then flip your lights at week seven and they will slowly break down and provide the nutrition needed throughout the life cycle of that plant. I do recommend a microbial inoculant of any kind with any way you grow, whether you grow hydro, cocoa, soil, um, like soilless medias. Um, if you're not in organics, even in organics, products like fish shit, so photosynthesis plus, um, mammoth pea, um, any of these microbial inoculants, even if you're using synthetic fertilizers, are really going to help unlock turpins and, and bring flavor out in your plants. Um, the microbes are what break down the minerals, even if they are a synthetic mineral. Um, this is part of the mix that you're making? So microbial inoculants are usually watered in or, or right. added into the product like Recharge. Um, the, the guys that make Recharge are the, also the guys that make um, grow dots. Um, I am a member of the Dude Grows Club. Like I love them. Their podcast is great. They're very informative. On top of that, they put out a really good product. The Recharge product has um, it has kelp in it. It has molasses in it. Um, it has a good, well-rounded diversity of um, microbes. Um, 
and some bacteria that are healthy for the plants. Um, and you, when you use it with grow dots, the two products together, um, those microbes help unlock the, um, the, the fertilizer, basically. They make the fertilizer more bioavailable. Um, to, make, to make it make the easiest amount of sense, um, plants on their own are take the sunlight and they create sugar, okay? Plants can't take and make minerals on their own though. They have to get minerals solubilized by microbes in the soil, even, even in like in our pots, there's little microbes in there. And so what happens when you get the microbes in and around the root zone is the plant will send its sugars down, the, the microbes take the sugars and in exchange for the sugars, the microbes make um, minerals bioavailable to the plants basically. So it's this whole exchange. So by adding microbes, even again, to like a synthetic cocoa mix, you're bringing in the ability to have more minerals uptake and, and minerals uptake more efficiently. So you won't need to use as many nutrients. The nutrients that are left over in the container, if you are watering in nutrients twice a week, and when you're not watering in those nutrients, you add a microbial inoculant like recharge, it's gonna break those nutrients that are in the pot down better and just help the plant use them better. Uh, all right. How many times are you watering every day, every other day, just regularly? Or, or like, are you just watering the plants? You get you got a little mister going all the time or like? So watering depends on plant size, pot size, and um, what stage of growth it's in. So you water. Typically, when you're in a pot with a full-size plant, you'll water 5 to 10% of the volume of the container with water. Um, I'm terrible with math. I have to write it down, um, but start with 5% and or, or grab the pots when you first started, fill them up empty and add 5% of water and feel what that way is. Like that's, you know, where you need to be. When you're in seedling stage in very small plants, they need water routinely, but they can't be soaking wet. So you do want to go in when they're small and just like mist them in the beginning when they're when they're seedlings and make sure you're not overwatering them. And you want to allow the soil to dry out because as much as plants and roots need water, they need oxygen just as much. So they have to have dry downs. That's why we mix a lot of um, perlite into the soil. We call it the aeration. That's root space where it's going to dry out a little quicker. If you're growing in something like cocoa coir, um, that dries out really quick on its own. That's one of the reasons why people like it. It has a, a quick dry down cycle. Um, and it's really good at that. So potting soils and, and mixes that are meant for growing are usually loaded with aeration and they, they typically will dry out quickly. So to answer your question, do you water daily? It's, it's really gonna depend. You're gonna hit a point where you're gonna need to water daily because if they're little and you can't add a lot of water to a little plant, then you're going to get to a point where they're grown up and you can add a little bit larger volume of water so you can go a couple of days in between watering without having them overwatered. Then when you hit flower, you're going to grow to this point where you're like, I can water them every day and they drink a gallon because, you know, one day the bud is this big and the next day the bud is this big, you know, so that's yeah. water taken into the plant. So that's going to change throughout the plant's lifetime. The, the, the need is going to change as the plant changes, just like humans do. So how do you tell, how do you tell, how do you tell when it needs all that? Is it, is it just stages? Like, is it kind of like a routinely, does it say on each strain? Is it kind of like you're paying attention to the plant? Are you seeing, is it like, all right, hey, it's hitting this stage. Now it's time to move. And then what is, so like, is that why operation 1620 is here? Like, is it? because <clears throat> like i'm 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 tracking a lot of this but i have like i have a feeling once it like hits that stage i'm be like holy smokes like is this is this what we're talking about now like so is this what operation 1620 is offering like these mentors that are gonna like i'm sitting here on my like, hey, eight this is where i'm at right now is this am i doing this right and, and yes so i have been the lead mentor for a long time i have um jim who's another mentor he helps out um, at this point, I don't have a lot of mentees, so I can give you one-on-one -on -one time. 
Um, and that's what it's all about, yeah. So it seems overwhelming and I'm gonna tell you it's not, it's, it is weed, it's called weed, it grows like a weed. Um, yeah. You wanna try to make it, a good way to think about your environment is if you're comfortable, your plant's gonna be comfortable. Um, how do you know when to water? Man, if the pot's real dry and your plant's droopy, it needs some water. If your plant's droopy and it's soaking wet, it's over water. Yeah. Uh, a plant have turger, and turger means the plant's sitting, the leaves are up. They're up praying, they're rigid, the water's pumping through them. If the leaves have gone limp and you feel them and they're real wet feeling, it's overwatered. You'll see that the soil's overwatered. If the leaves are drooping and they're dried out, you'll feel the leaf, it'll feel dried out, like just like your skin. I mean, when we yeah. get in the sun, you know, you pinch your skin and it's like, oh man, there's no elasticity left i'm all dried out you know so don't uh, be afraid to like touch this shit yeah and you can yeah you can touch the cannabis plant when they're seedlings are the hardest point and it's like it's like having a baby for a week and a half um i just popped fucking like 300 dollars in seeds and i got busy one day and they got too dry and they, they suffered. So I watered them and I a little overwatered them. And then I got busy a day later and missed them again. And I killed all my fucking seedlings. It happens with seedlings. They're babies. I mean, the beauty in it is they're not our babies that we made in real life. So yeah. we're not. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> they can be replaced. Um, even me, like I, I, I blew up some fucking seeds that I really wanted. They're like $150 pack of seeds. I fucking killed them all. I, it is what it is, dude. There's more seeds. Um, <clears throat> clones are a lot easier. If you get a rooted clone, my God, is that a lot easier? You're down South. I know we have some members down there that won't be able to help with that too. But so what's the difference between like seeding and clones now? Because I remember, I remember a, a guy that I met one time that was, that was like, make it he was he was growing his own weed and he had like a mother clone he said but like that's how he pulled it off but like so what would be the difference of me taking in a clone a clone like a rooted clone versus a seed you know like me starting off with a seedling okay so when you pop a seed from a seedling it has to to grow up right and it has to grow all the branches and even if you were to take a seedling that just germinated a photo plant, this is not an auto plant, but a photosensitive cannabis plant and put it under 12 hours of light, it will not just go into flower. It's going to take six to eight weeks to go into flower. It has to grow up, go through puberty and reach sexual maturity. Just like yeah. us as human beings, we can't just make a baby when we're seven years old. It don't work. You might be able to figure it out and how to do the trick, but eh, you know. yeah, 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 yeah. It's not going to happen. Um, plants are a little bit different than that. They don't, they're not even going to try. Even if you put in 12 hours of light, it would start making the hormones when it got old enough. So, and that that's varies strain to strain, um, but it's going to be minimum four weeks as far out as eight weeks before you can have a seedling actually flower. When you have a clone, that clone, even though you cut it a week ago and it made roots and then you put it in a cup and it's only had roots for a week. It's as old as the mother plant. So if the mom was sprouted eight weeks ago, that clone is eight weeks old still. Um, people hold mother plants, like you're saying, those even get rotated. It's never like I had the same plant and it's a hundred year old plant. Clone mother clones get recycled out two to three times a year, typically. Um, and you take a clone and that's and you root it and let it get big, and that's your next mom plant. Um, and again, that's coming back to the longer a plant's alive in a single pot, the more stress is going to be on it, the more likely it is to get viruses, viroids, and, and it just gets old and weak and needs to be refreshed. So what like big grows do is they'll have their mom plant and they'll take clones off it for three or four cycles and they won't even flower that mom like in commercial facilities they 86 that mom she's too old she's root bound um so what i like to tell people is if you're growing perpetually um and about the time you can if you had two tents you'd get your mom plant or you if you wanted to start from a seed you get your seed grow eight weeks send it to flower take a clone off it right before you send it to flower root that clone 
in that eight weeks to 10 weeks that your mom plant is now flowering and that clone grows up and gets big enough to be your next run, you put it in the, the flower space, take a clone and start again. Um, so the clone is always, if you get a clone, like if you can get our Sunday driver clone that the operation 1620 kind of Sunday driver, that clone's been in this group for five years. That clone came to us from an outside grow that went to Colorado and got the clone from somebody who had the mom plant. So that clone's like, fuck, probably eight or nine years old. So when you get a clone of it, it's a nine-year-old cannabis plant. You just have a, a small one of it. That's crazy. That's so, that just is like, <clears throat> man, that puts, it just makes it sound insane. All right, so for for guys that you would say, so for people like brand new, what would you say like are your my main fundamentals of trying to get it? Like I said, from here from here to there, like so. Obviously, we're going with soil, making sure that we're hitting it. For it now we're doing photo now. Or, well, so is there anything different between growing organically and synthetically? Like, is there health benefits to it? Like. You know, are you able to claim it differently? Like, what, what, what's is that? Is that just personal preference? Is that like what people like to do? Is that so? I love growing organically. I find it just to be stupid easy. I take water and I dump it on. My shit's all set. I really don't need to do anything. It allows me to cruise control through grows. I don't like mixing things and having to measure. Um, I have arthritic hands. I'm shaky. I don't want to play with bottles. I've done it in the past. It's, it's fun. Um, the plant knows no difference in how it gets its minerals. Even if you take fish bone meal, just for example, and an organic amendment, a dry powder, and put it down in the soil, it's not going to go into the plant right away. Minerals have to come break it down and make it bioavailable to the plant. Now, when you take a bottle of liquid synthetic nutrients. They've taken those minerals. Minerals are gotten out of the ground. We don't just make minerals up in laboratories. They're, they're derived from the ground. It's phosphate, phosphorus, calcium, magnesium, boron, iron, plants use it all, sulfur. Um, but they've, I may, stay, I may say it wrong, chelated it, the mineral. And by doing that, they're basically taking it in a um, scientific process and making the minerals available to the plant in the water, making it soluble, I guess is a good way to say it. Yeah. Like, so if you have a salt grain, it's got to melt before we can ingest it. The same yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah. they made that iron so the plant can take it because iron in its raw form, the plant can't just draw up an iron molecule. It fucking can't. It's not available that way. It has to yeah, be made. Yeah. So the plant doesn't know. <clears throat> that can be debated but i don't think there's any difference in the quality and consumption of the cannabis i don't believe in flushing people will say you need to flush your synthetic nutrients okay uh you can't flush the minerals out of a plant once they're taken up you can stop watering at the end of a plant's life cycle which we is okay but it's not really flushing anything um, what the plant has drawn up and stored in its buds, it's drawn up and stored in its buds and you're never going to get them out. If you want to get those compounds out, you have to break them down. You have to use like alcohol and break the THC down from the plant. It's not just going to wash out with water in their roots. So flushing is a total myth. Feed your plant till the end. Don't let your plant starve, right? All like right. <laughs> If you're a bodybuilder and you're going into a competition, are you going to cut your nutrition out for the last two weeks? No, you're going to keep eating. The plant will slow down its feeding. And if you look at feed schedules, typically at the end, they, they taper a little bit. But I say feed till the end. Um, benefits to organic versus synthetics. Well, you can argue a thousand different ways on a thousand different things on what it's doing to the environment to get these different things out. People will say, you know, harvesting bat guano is hard on the environment. I grow organically. I don't use bat guano. I use seed meals. But I don't like cottonseed meal because cottonseed is one of the most highly pesticide sprayed crops in the world. So I use like paranja seed and neem seed. And yeah, see, this is deep. This is deep. Is one more beneficial than the other? No. Um, 
I choose to grow in a method that I find to be ethical to the environment that makes me feel good. Um, I will say you're my heavily pro- invested in the growing. I like this. If you're synthetic, if you're adding microbial inoculants, it's going to enhance the flavors and the terpenes in your plants, and you're really not going to tell the difference. Some plants, um, and I'm just going to I'm going to throw out a blanket statement. Let's just say you're growing um, two different plants, OG Kush and Blue Dream, and you're using the General Hydroponics line, and you're not giving any microbial inoculants. Um, you can see that these plants will have similar taste profiles. There'll be some things will be the same. So there is something to be said about adding microbial inoculants that will really help change the game. And I've seen it, I've tasted it. Um, it's really nerd level stuff. Um, but no, the plants don't know a difference. And when it's done right, uh, you couldn't. If your weed's grown correctly, I can't tell if you've grown synthetic or organically. I will say, um, and I stand by this as somebody that's grown hydro organically in all the different modalities, hydro grows very fast in all stages. um, And you can get some super huge yields, bigger than you would if you were growing in cocoa coir or in organic soil. I do feel there is a trade-off. And most plants go 65 to 70 days in their flower cycle. In that 60 to 75 day window, a plant can only create so much energy. Do you want that energy to go to biomass or do you want it to go to resin production and secondary metabolites? Secondary metabolites are things like flavonoids, terpenes, and esters. Those are what give your smells and your taste. I truly believe that THC numbers that they advertise are sales gimmicks and they're irrelevant in the grand scheme of the way cannabis works as a medication. It has far more to do with the presence of all things, the THC, the CBD, CBGs, the terpenes, esters, and flavonoids all work together. And that's why each plant has, when you smoke the flower on a whole, not a concentrate, has a completely different effect. And that effect is different for different people. Follow your nose. Find a cannabis that smells. When you smell it, it, your senses light up. You're like, ooh, I like that. I want it. I bet that's going to be a medicine that's good for you. And that's going to be the kind of strain you're going to want to grow. And there might be several different kinds. You might have, I like this one for this. And I like this one for this effect. It's more than the THC, it's the terpenes. So the key is, is to, to grow healthy quality plants and you're gonna be able to get the maximum potential from those plants. And, and it doesn't matter what nutrient line you use, if you just pay attention to the plants, follow their instructions and a little bit of love, you're gonna get that result. Are there, are there multiple different, are, like, are, are there all certain, are there all types of different, how did you learn more about terpenes? Like, is there like, because there's obviously not like a website that you go like www.terpins, you know, like how do you, is that more just strain specific? You just kind of learn that like, hey, I like this turpin and that and that and that strain. And then I feel it in this strain and then you start adding them together. And that's based off of your profile now. And then like, how do you choose what what you would like to grow? Is it more like, hey, you know, I, I feel this effect, you know, like you hear people feel like they feel like this off of this. And then you're like, yeah, hey, I want to test out this grow. Does some grows go easier? Like as beginners, like, would you be like, hey, growing this Moby Dick XL versus growing this OG Kush? Like, you know, OG Kush is very easy and a very like, you know, loving strain versus this strain is a, hard, is a harder grow, you know, like, is that possible? Like, how do you choose all that? And, and how do you learn about that? So experience um, is how I've gotten everything. Um, and that's with cannabis because a doctor can only give you a referral and then you're, you're only hearing what somebody else's experience is. And everybody's endocannabinoid system is a little bit different. So everybody's gonna have different requirements. Um, I'm just gonna use lemon profile, for example. When I smoke real lemony weed, for me, it's typically a more energized buzz. Um, and I like it, it, it helps me, but somebody else might smoke it and it's going to make them tired. Um, kind of like ADHD medications, people that are prescribed 
Ritalin don't get tweaked off of it. People that aren't supposed to have it, they're like sped off of it, like ding. Um, so that's an experience-based thing. And that's part of why Balanced Veterans Network um, helps cover the cost of medical cards. So you can go out and at least not have to pay for a card while you're trying to figure out what strains work for you. So a good way to do it is like you said, buy pre-rolls, buy grams. Unfortunately in Illinois, we can't smell what we're getting beforehand to see, oh, does that tickle my nose? But pay attention to what is on the back of the label with the turpin profile. And then you'll begin to learn that like, hmm, things with a lot of limonene, I really like because they give me um, a cerebral feeling. I feel energized. I feel focused. Um, things with a lot of miserin in them. I, I, I'm, I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong. Miserine or whatever. Um, and linalool. Um, those make me sleepy. So when I smell things that smell earthy and like gym locker, hockey bag kind of smell, like boot camp fucking locker room shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I'm going to get really high. I'm going to, for me, I'm going to be sit back. I'm going to be sedated. It's going to be a real heady body high where I just want to chill out and giggle a little bit. And for me, um, in particular, like the miserin and stuff, really helps with pain. Um, limonene and like lemony strains are, I like to smoke that when I go play disc golf and go for a fucking hike. And it's like that citrusy smell. I It's a doesn't affect my body the same way. It doesn't um, make me just want to kind of sit. Not that I want to yeah. sit. I, I can smoke weed and do just about anything, but some strains are definitely yeah. better watching the movie and 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 relaxing than going out on a hike so find what works for you ask other people because in general a lot of us have the same things and that's where they're going to lean into the sativa and indicas and a lot of that does kind of work but 99.9 percent .9 of cannabis today is a polyhybrid meaning it's a indica and a sativa and an indica and a sativa crossed together crossed with another indica and sativa and indicas it's yeah creations of indica and sativas crossed together so you might get a narrow leaf structure but it's finishing in 50 something days and giving super narcotic effects and then yeah. you might end up giving a squatter structure and having a fat leaf which would be relevant of an indica plant but its effects are more sativa like so it's it's not indica and sativa, it's turpin based. And you'll find that like, it is pretty general, you know, like cushy strains are a little bit more relaxing and Jack Herrera and stuff is a little bit more energizing. As far as how, what's harder to grow? Yes. Look on breeders recommendations and they will tell you. Um, some plants are just a pain in the ass. Kim dog, sour diesel, um, all the Kim strains, Kim 91. Dude, the fucking leaves eat themselves. I've grown a lot of weed. Like, they're ugly. The fucking, you're like six weeks into flower and you got these leaves turning yellow on you and you're like, yeah, I'm fucking doing everything right. It's fucking <laughs> buds are growing, you know? Um, we're growing buds, not leaves. It's great yeah. to have, you, have to, you could put on Instagram and the fucking leaves are green the whole way through it. That might not happen your first grow. That might happen your first grow. It might happen for your first five grows, then grow six all of a sudden, something's going to shit and you've done everything the same the whole way. Yeah. Just learning and learning is growing. It's an evolution. Um, you're always going to be adapting. Um, it, unless you take the same plant and you keep that clone and you keep growing that clone over and over again, taking notes on everything you do, every new grow can present a different set of challenges. Um, like I said, the chem dog, Kim 91, uh, sour diesel, they're notorious for fucking self necrotting themselves. Like before they're done, the fucking leaves are chewing themselves apart. Skittles is another one. It's fucking finicky. It grows like shit. It's not really pretty looking when it grows, but the turp profiles through the fucking roof. Yeah. Um, some strains don't yield well. If you get any of these cookies crosses, it's really hard to get big buds off them. They throw little, little buds, you know, at, tighter the internodal spacing i mean the space between the buds is farther um whereas if you grow like some of the older school strains um like jack Herrera and blue dream like the node spacing's tighter 
So they're closer together and they make what appears to be bigger, huge buds. One's not better than the other. Sometimes your environment would be better suited for those little small buds because it just works better um, and they grow better. So once you get a grow or two down, even out of like a three by three tent, even if you're consuming an ounce of cannabis a week, like you're going to have medicine for yourself and you're going to be in a place where you're feeling better about it and not as stressed. I will say that. Awesome. What do you, so also, I, I, I want to ask you then, what do you think, how now it's, it's, it's insane to think about all like the different medical and like the real benefits of this and, and, and not like, not only like the health benefits, but like the psychological benefits and so on and so forth through all this stuff, you know, and like not even, you know, like you can smoke, you can sit down with some of the hardest of the hardest dudes to smoke a certain strain. And then all of a sudden you got this guy really talking at the mouth, you know, and now shutting up, but he feels like he's around his homies, you know, like how, how do you see and how, how would you, how do you want to attack the world, you know, with using the operation 1622, you know, bring this shit to light to people, to the VA and let them know this, you know, like how, how do you think that we could do this as growers, you know, as like somebody who's about to get into this and really hopefully dive into this and help out as much as I can. Like, how do you think that we can, we can, you know, is it documentation through all of our grows, you know, if you take documentation, what do you do? Like, how do you document it and so on and so forth? Like, you know, what is your, what do you see differently when in the different grows? What do you, what do you do differently? You know, is it, is it more uh, just, you know, like, you know, it, it, it feels like it's so many factors to focus on, like, you know, light factors and all that, like, you know, the different led wattages and shit, is that something to worry about? You know, but it, like, you, you see what I'm saying? There's just so many different factors to worry about. Like, how do you, how do you, how do you Barney style that? Like, so, Again, refer to manufacturer's recommendations, even with like your cheaper lights like Mars Hydro and Spider Farmer like that. They're telling you that this light will cover that space. That's that's it. It is that easy. Um, you don't need to have a par meter and fucking no, nah, man, like when they're a little, you know, you can either put your light up a little higher or turn them off. The plants will react and I'll help you. I, I will will walk you through your grill. That is one thing that we do. As Operation 1620, we will walk you through your first grow. And then I'll keep helping you on your second one. And the idea is, is that in the community, um, my other people are going to come in and help. Um, Bryce, I think you've been talking with Colin, right? Yeah, um, I just linked up with Colin. I just sent so him a I, text you. I got some cuts from me years ago on like his first grow. I helped him, man. Like we got another guy down by you, Tim. He's He's holding some good cuts. Um, he started with a CFL bulb in a closet. His plant stretched real high. We had him tip the plant over sideways and he did a sideways grow. The guy That's now crazy. props to Tim. If you see this and you're watching it and you got this far through the video, Tim, you're a fucking master fucking well, not a master grower. None of us are master growers, but you really stepped your game up and he's a couple years down the road. Now he could tell you what to do. He's got his, it's his method and he uses, you know, the nectar for the gods and he found yeah. how to do it found what he likes and he sticks to it and that's that's the key is find what works for you find the product that works maybe you'll change up i've changed since growing weed's been legal in what our state for four years now in illinois and i i mean i popped fucking seeds right away i'm like i'm finally fucking able to do this legally again <laughs> this summer's the first time i have not had a cannabis plant growing in my house since then um, I had all summer off. I'm looking forward to my vacation next week. And then I'm really looking forward to popping some new seeds again, especially after fucking my last ones up. Um, and how do, what do we do and how do we spread this message? Um, the best way to do it is go out. And when you're at the VA, have these conversations with the guy next to you and, and the seat, wear the fucking shirt, um, wear the hat, you know, people ask you a question. Oh, yeah. hey, hey, this is, this is what we do. And be like, oh man, you guys are just fucking stoners. Well, no, we're not. Dude, we're we're veterans too. Like we're we're the same. Yeah. And it's not just about getting stoned. We are finding balance. Um, we're doing yoga. We're finding. Uh, we're we're remembering that we have that that warrior fucking spirit in us, and a little bit of exercise and 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 thinking, get your head clear, 
um, and, and reset your shit with um, psychedelics and stuff like that really help people too, like microdosing mushrooms. They help slow down and reset and get that, that mental state right and get that back in that flow state that you need to be in to operate um, and operate at the best level you can. And that, that might not be weed for everybody. It might, it might not be everybody's cup of tea. I'm not ever going to say it is, but I'm going to say it helps a lot of people and there's no, no harm to try it. And yeah, talking to people about it, sharing your experience with somebody, making them feel like, well, hey, he doesn't seem like a fucking dumbass fucking stoner. Like, shit, he's got five kids. He's fucking going through this shit. Like, it's that fucking story is just like mine, all the alcohol, fucking. Every time I drink, I get a little bit more depressed. Cut I really for some reason not doing me good. Um, so that's how you do it. You just keep having those stories and conversations, spreading the group, spreading the knowledge, sharing what you're taking away from it, um, the therapies and benefits you've received from cannabis um, use and growing it. Because when you start growing it, that is a whole other therapy. It's horticultural therapy. Dude, I, I really, I really, that's been like one big thing that I've been trying to focus on a lot too. So I'm trying to get this damn thing to switch over this fucking stupid ass fucking thing. Um, but that's one thing I really had to like, listen, you know, think about, I think about it a lot, you know, um, before my grandpa died one time, before my grandpa died, uh, his big thing, he died from cancer, right? Lung cancer. His big thing is he liked being in the garden, you know? And, and it is something that is therapeutic, you know? Like, I find a lot of times, like, you sit there and you wonder what to do. And I, like, you know, I'm like, damn. Like, I, I really do. I, I like to see how passionate everybody really is about this shit, you know? And, and it, it feels feels awesome, you know? So I feel blessed to be a part of this, too. And thanks for even, like, giving me the time for this, man. This is, this is, I'm excited to take this journey, dude. I'm very excited. All right. So with that, we're going to wrap this video. I'm going to try to stop recording here. If not, they're going to have. Well, no, that just stopped me. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't know how to stop it. So we'll go for just another minute here. Um, let's get in touch, though, when I get back into town and set something up. We'll get you that equipment. Um, and get you underway and i I'll, I'll i'll hold your hand through your grow man i mean if that's what you want to call it like whatever you've got questions reach out you know I'll, i'm typically able to respond within a day um and then you'll have other people that are going to support you too colin bryce all the other members jim anybody that's grown can chime in caleb has grown i've walked jen through her first grow i've walked i've walked 35 or more people through their first grows and got everybody successful did some leaves Shoot. die on something yeah we're not growing leaves. Don't worry about that shit. Like it's a weed. It will grow when you bend it down. It pops back up overnight. You'll see. We'll just follow recommendations for whatever methodology you want to go with. Um, if you're looking for recommendations um, for products, we can, I can further recommend, you know, like I said, the grow dots, if you want that nectar for the gods are a good bottle lineup. Hell the Fox farm trio. I got a buddy that He's been growing forever. He uses the Fox Farm trio um, of nutrients and they're pretty basic. It's, you know, a grow, a bloom and a, a boost. So he, he gets fire weed, dude. I, I trade bud with him all the time. I'm like, you want to trade an ounce? He's like, yeah, I'm like, all right, buddy. Fucking good. Oh, okay, good. Dude. So how, how long, how, would you say like, so hydroponics, man, is that like a whole new beast, dude, trying to like hydro grow weed? So I liken hydroponics to driving a top fuel dragster down Chicago streets. Oh, jeez. Fuck up at all. You're going to go, you're going to go, you're going big or you're fucking going broke. Um, with hydro, where all your nutrients and all your roots are in a water solution all the time together. If that solution airs at all, be it the temperature gets too hot or too cold. The pH goes off. The level of minerals gets too high or too low. The plant immediately, immediately has an effect. Um, yeah, like, immediate. When you are growing in soil 
or even cocoa coir. Um, because cocoa coir is technically a hydroponic mix. Um, it's it's soilless mix. Cocoa coir is a little different um, than than like peat based soils. Um, but like growing in, in roots in water, deep water culture, aeroponics, um, flood tables, that kind of thing. Any of those actual hydroponic methodologies, where the water is the solution and it's getting flooded in several times a day, or or it's permanently in the roots. Man, anything goes wrong. You're fucked. Deep water culture where you're running them pumps and shit, you got to run chillers. I had a hydro set up and it was sponsored. Now it's going to try to do hydro grow videos. I set it all up, put plants in it. Immediately, the humidity spiked so high in my tent, even with my dehumidification system, I got powdery mildew right away. And my water temperature was too high. So I started getting. Um, root rot, like browning on my roots. The root, so I would have had to run a water chiller. Like a dragster. And only a dragster going to run for fucking nine seconds at a time. And when they do, they 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 run through all their shit. I don't know if you're into cars at all. That's, that's just one of the ways I liken it. Yeah. Um, or, or like an athlete running at full speed. Dude, athletes train. They don't always go like they're going the day before the race. That's They can't continue that pace forever. Um. It's 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 difficult. So hydro is great, man. I mean, it it the growth rates. We have one of our members, um, Curly Curry. You'll see him on a, our Facebook group in particular. He grows hydro, dude. He crushes it. His fucking plants grow so fast. It's crazy. That's insane, dude. I'm I'm, I'm excited. I see a lot of these guys growing. It's just like it's amazing. It, I'm 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 just like it's it's. I will say it's very, is very like intimidating, right? I'm very intimidated just to like open that first like pot and like start mixing soil and put that seed down. You know, like I, for some reason, like I, I, I pulled a, a, a seed off one of my buddies, like uh buds the other day and I've had it just like in this dark little hole, like for forever, like just thinking like, I don't, I don't know why I just always get so afraid of putting that soil into that fucking pot and, and getting it going, dude. But I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm ready, dude. I just, I feel like as soon as it happens though, it's going to be one of those pieces where I'm just like every few seconds, I just want to look at it. I'm going to put like a ring camera in that bitch and want to just watch it all the time. You know, it, it happens. It's, it's one of the fun things about talking with new, new growers is they're that excited again. Cause I'll like, I'll pop seeds and I'll be like, ah, <laughs> I'm not going to work for two days because I know nothing's going to happen that quick. But there are certain points in a plant's growth cycle, especially when it hits flower. Man, like you go down every day and they're like, holy shit, that fucking bud's getting fucking huge, dude. Yeah, dude, yeah. Excited when they flower. When they're smaller stages, it's not as exciting. But watching you get excited is, is, is really fun. Um, don't be scared, dude. If you got a seed, especially if it's a bag seed, put it in a solo cup and fucking put it in the windowsill and let it germinate. See what happens. Yeah. Doesn't work. It was a fucking bag seed. If it works, keep growing it. See what happens. Experience sure. growth. Gain the experience of popping a seed because you yeah. haven't had it yet. And and you're not going to do anything wrong. What, what if it dies? I'll, I'll give you another fucking seed. I got a fucking, we got a thousand <laughs> seeds just donated to us, dude. Don't worry if you kill a couple. Um, That's cool, dude. Yeah. It's, yeah. I really do. The biggest thing is just my, I, I talked to Eric today and it's just trying to get like, a lot of people have like all put these AC infinity tents ahead of it. I've looked into it. You know, there's one, there's somebody that's selling one in like Orland that's selling a little bit of like set up for like 200 bucks. And I really want to bite the bullet, but like, I also like, it, it's like, there's also that Viva sun. Like there's like this massive four by eight by nine, you know, like there's, there's all these different tents. And it's just like, dude, like it, it and then there's a part of me that's just like I just want to clean out my closet, put a tarp around it, and put a plant, you know, right in the fucking middle of this closet and just see what happens, you know. Like, so I don't, I don't really know where to begin. Too, that's the thing. Like, I like, I, I think, you know, I, I do want to go get the plants, and I do want to go get the uh, like. I, I wish I, I want to. I would love to go like I, meet and Colin. I would love to go see like if I can just show up at his place and meet him one day and actually see like the process, you know, and like just put eyes on it all you know because it's it just seems so all unreal for me right now you know it just still seems so like crazy to me you know the idea of just like thinking that this thing's gonna flower dude so i will definitely say um like <clears throat> i had vivo sun tents they're a little bit cheaper um so i like the mars hydro and spider farmer tents if you can 
afford or get an AC Infinity tent. They are 100% worth their money. They're not that much more than the cheap tents, but they're a lot less than a gorilla tent. And the next best tent in the in cannabis growing or indoor growing is going to be your gorilla grow tents. And they're super expensive. They're like triple what AC Infinity is. I bought AC Infinity tent on pre-order before they even came out. Um, they've modified the design twice since they came out based on user reviews. They've only gotten better. Their inline fans have always been the best. Their clip-on fans are the best clip-on fans ever. I've been growing a long time. Their equipment is worth its weight in fucking gold, and it's not that much. Their warranty department is out fucking standing. If you have controllers go, they'll send you new controllers without even having the old part in hand yet. With um with the expectation you'll send it back or they'll just say keep the old part. Um, so, so if I buy well, that full kit, it all comes with it. Like everything just it's a little it just shows up to the door. I put it all together and I'm ready to roll. Yep. Their kit is their kit is worth it. They have their whole kit is it's the only company who I'll say, yeah, buy their whole grow kit. Like it's worth yeah. it. Spider Farmer has a really good light and their grow kit's pretty good. But at that price range, I would just say get the AC Infinity. Get up because it's it makes it fucking easy. They have all their light has a timer programmed in that works with the fans and it's very easy and user friendly. Um yeah. the interface on it is outstanding. Yeah, it's kind of like getting in the 3D printer world. It'll help you introduce yourself into the growing world. Yep, they really, they really, and they even when you get their setup, like they give you the how to grow book. The how to grow book has everything you need. You could literally follow their instructions and 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 get cannabis because it is that easy it, it seems overwhelming because there's so much out there and that's what i like to tell people is i can teach anybody how to grow i don't care what grow style you choose it doesn't matter what nutrients you choose the plant wants to grow um they if you buy a five pack of seeds they're probably going to be six or seven seeds in there with the knowledge that sometimes a plant doesn't make it the breeders do their best Usually you get 100% germination rate. A lot of times it's our fault as a grower why they die. But so what? They gave you an extra one, you know? So if you kill one, pop another one. Um, let that experience, as long as you learn, like I know what I did wrong when I killed my seedlings. If you walked away like, oh, I have no idea why these things died. Did you take notes? If you have your notes, look at it. Because if the environment's on point and you're giving them, you know, X, Y, Z, you say, I watered four ounces of water every day. Well, if the walk cup was heavy as fuck the whole time and didn't need four ounces of water every day, even though that's 5% volume, you needed to wait for it to dry out to give it its 5% again. Or you can look and be like, well, my temperature was 68 degrees. Well, seedlings like 78 to 80 degrees. They don't, they don't, they get cold when they're that small, they shrivel up. Oh, yeah. my temperature is 90 degrees. That's too hot. A big plant can take those stresses, but a little plant's going to really feel the effects just like a baby so you kind of got to coddle them but once you're out of those stages it gets it gets real basic you just got to have the environment dialed in and, and like i said follow the manufacturer's instructions for feeding some plants feed a little heavier and and use calcium more um, you'll hear cal mag the answer a lot the reason that is a huge statement is because people grow in cocoa choir cocoa choir it's scientific shit. It's like the cation exchange. It's it's the way cocoa choir holds minerals. It steals calcium out of water and wants to store it. It has an extra space in its molecule set up for a calcium to bind. So growing in cocoa choir means you need to add calcium almost every watering because it's binding in with the cocoa choir. And calcium is something that's very hard to overdo a plant if you're following a dosage and you're only giving it, you know, the, the recommended dosage. A lot of the grows, um, what am I trying to think? Canna nutrient line. Uh, canna has, I think, a three or four part canna. Canna A and B. And then, yeah, it's canna A and B. They have a specific line. It's canna A and B cocoa blend. That comes with a boost of calcium in it already because they know that when you're growing in cocoa, you need more calcium because the <laughs> cocoa fire is different than that of peat. 
but so it's also, really, but it all it all really says is that it it's 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 read the instructions like the bag's still telling me all this too. Oh, yep. so that's really Barney style. And then you got me on standby, and and you got the group on standby. All the everybody that starts growing weed, they want to talk about growing weed with other people. So oh, yeah, dude, I'm I'm so excited. I I, I honestly feel like getting the candy store at time. I really like. I've said I've been sitting here like begging my girl like can I'm like please can I spend some money like I've been waiting for the first of the month to hit and see left like I've been waiting to see how much I'll have left over to see if I can throw any down but I'm really I'm really I'm excited as shit dude I'm about to clean out this closet and really just get it going just it's uh because dude I, they got right now I'm I had back surgery and I'm about to go down for another back surgery dude like I'm just I'm nervous as fuck man like and and. When, what I realized about being like a vet with all these different pain, like pains and surgeries and shit, right? And like, what people don't realize is that like when the pain's on the daily, dude, like it's for when everybody else hears about it, you know, it's just like, oh, that motherfucker, you know, like it's it's the boy who cried wolf, you know, but like for everybody that really feels it on the daily, like it, it really is, it, it there's no like just toning it out. I mean, there is a day where you can tone it down and go through it, but like, dude, weed, weed really does, it, it helps, it helps bring bring the, that barrier closer dude and bridge that gap man like i'm uh i'm excited to fucking hit this journey dude this this, this means a lot to be allowed to be in, to be a part of this community man outstanding well happy to fucking meet you and talk to you tonight we're gonna end this video now um dude plant the seed you got and put it in your fucking closet like, <laughs> under, a, under like just a house lamp with a grow light bulb to start and we'll get you that tent and we'll get you the light I have and and flower a fucking plant out and just have the experience and know that like the yields may not be as good to start um, because you don't have the best light yet and you haven't got it all dialed in. But even if you had all the best equipment on your first grow, you're not going to get the best yields. You have to you have to grow a plant and, and get yeah. that. Get yeah. some not your belt kind of thing. Yeah. It's it's all about the experience and even even if you only grow an ounce on your first plant i'm telling you it's going to be like the best weed you ever smoke you're like, man it's <laughs> you'll be smoking it it's a little wet you'll be like well you know it's harsh as fuck you're like eh, it's still pretty good like that eh, shit that shit's got two more weeks to fucking dry and you know it but it's going to be the best weed you ever fucking smoked it really will be. <laughs> See, i don't even know anything about the harvest yet and i already know i'm gonna still go to my boys and be like this shit right here bro this shit right here like please i know you want to try this man like I'm, I'm i'm excited but at the same time man like it's it really is like I, i'm ready for a hobby dude you know like it's a. Uh, this, this, I'm, I, I really, I feel like a kid in the candy store, dude. I'm excited to share it to it, so <laughs> I'm ready to rock and roll. All right, brother. We'll talk soon. All right, I appreciate it, dude. All right, man. Take care. Take care.